Let's bring in former FBI general counsel and senior member of the Mueller probe, Andrew Weissman. Andrew, uh, it, it's always great to talk with you. Um, this is on an historic uh, uh, evening. But I do want to go back just for a moment to the dichotomy between these federal and state charges. Because I, I think what people, we talk a lot about the campaign finance aspects of this payoff to Ms. Daniels, to Stormy Daniels. Um, but this is a state prosecutor. So a federal uh, election isn't in his purview. So what we're talking about is the same facts. It's the same facts that put Michael Cohen in prison with a federal indictment, but these are state charges. Um, so can you just talk about that dichotomy? Because what it, we don't know what these charges, they're, they're still sealed, but it's looking more like something like falsifying business records, lying about the purpose of the funds, not a campaign finance case. Is, is that accurate? It, it more or less is. The way I used to look at this when I was a prosecutor is you have, it, it's, I think, a very human way of thinking about things, which is there's a set of facts. Somebody has, you can prove, has done A, B, C, and D. And then as a lawyer, you take your sort of legal grid and you say, okay, what kind of laws did that violate? And so there are federal laws and there are state laws. And so the same set of facts can result in crimes such as wire fraud or mail fraud or securities fraud, and they can also result in certain state crimes. It's one ball of wax in terms of the, you know, what you're dealing with, but there are different tripwires you could have um, gone over uh, in the course of that conduct. So what you're seeing here is, I think, the same ball of wax where it re resulted in federal crimes that Michael Cohen pled guilty to and a federal judge agreed was a crime and sentenced him on. But at the same time, you can look at this um, because the feds didn't go forward um, for a whole variety of reasons as state crimes. And that is what Alvin Bragg has now, uh, it's been confirmed, done in bringing these charges and seeing what are the state crimes that are alleged. It's important to note that he may have found that a sort of enhancement for these state crimes comes from either state campaign laws or federal campaign laws. There is a way that they may form a part of the charges here, and it would be permissible uh, potentially to do that, but we don't know yet. I mean, that's something that a lot of legal right. nerds like me are waiting to see exactly how the charges play out. There's so many people that were involved, like sort of different pieces of the scheme. Uh, Co Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to tax evasion, false statements to a federally insured bank, causing an unlawful corporate contribution, excessive campaign contribution, and false statements um, to the U.S. Congress, all things that were associated with assisting Donald Trump in covering up this affair. Alan Weisselberg, who there has now dropped his Donald Trump-related lawyers, which is interesting. Um, he um, pleaded guilty to grand larceny in the second degree, criminal tax fraud in the third degree, a scheme to defraud, conspiracy, uh, criminal tax fraud, offering a false instrument and filing of the first degree and false filing business records. Um, do you think there's a significance here to him changing lawyers away from the lawyers who are associated with Donald Trump um, really in the next in the last couple of days? Um, I, I do, but I think, um, with all due respect, as they say, I sort of view it potentially the opposite way in that um, I know uh, the lawyers who used to represent um, Alan Weisselberg, the former CFO, who, who you correctly say has pleaded guilty to a host of crimes, and those were real ethical lawyers. Um, and I think that their mm. sin was that they were independent. Um, there are reports that the DA was increasingly putting pressure on uh, Mr. Weisselberg. There are facts alleged in Letitia James' attorney general complaint that suggests that Mr. Weisselberg ha has liability, criminal liability, for additional crimes. And I think the mm. sin of his lawyers who took him uh, through his guilty plea is that they are real lawyers who represented him and not the organization. And so I, I'm not saying casting aspersions on the new counsel, but I, I view it as a sure. sign that he 
that Mr. Weisselberg may not be cooperating, but he may, in, that, in fact, face additional charges. That is just a guess. I'm sort of mm. intuiting that from my own knowledge of these people and sort of what I would do if I were in that situation as a prosecutor and how I would try and uh, sort of bring additional charges with respect to Mr. Weisselberg to, to seek his cooperation. And if he didn't cooperate, to hold him account for additional crimes. Uh, interesting. Um, let me go a couple of other people. David Pecker. And of course, this was the, the uh, man from the National Enquirer. Um, he met twice with the grand jury. Um, and it was important in terms of trying to discredit the notion that the payments were just to protect from embarrassment to Melania Trump. Um, and this was in 2021, American Media Inc., which owns the Inquirer, settled a complaint with the Federal Election Commission alleging that they unlawfully aided Trump in 2016. The FEC found that Pecker and AMI had violated federal, federal election laws by making a payment to Playboy model Karen McDougal in order to purchase and bury a story about her 2006 affair with Trump same year as Ms. Daniels, and Pecker entered a non-prosecution agreement in which he admitted that the payments had been made in order to help Trump's campaign. So he's the other character. And of course, there is Stormy Daniels. And let me read the uh, response from Ms. Daniels' attorney, Clark Brewster. And this was their statement. The indictment of Donald Trump is no cause for joy. The hard work and conscientiousness of the grand jurors must be respected. Now let truth and justice prevail. No one is above the law. Uh, and now let me read the statement from Ron DeSantis, which just went away. Um, hopefully we'll get that back. Ron DeSantis has issued a statement um, uh, saying that he will not, will not help uh, to stand in the way Oh, not aid. Okay, here it is. Okay, moments ago, uh, Ron DeSantis, Governor Ron DeSantis, tweeted an attack on D.A. Alvin Bragg, accusing him of weaponizing the legal system. He also said, "Florida, quote, Florida will not assist in an extra an extradition request, given the questionable circumstances at issue with this Soros-backed Manhattan prosecutor." and his political agenda. That's a strange statement. <laughs> um, uh, do you want to comment on that? It is a, it, that is an odd statement from a governor, no? That's an odd statement. Well, I think I'd make two comments about it. Um, one, there's, it, it's hard to even call it a dog whistle of anti-Semitism um, in that statement. Yeah. And a governor should be respecting the rule of law. One of the things, and I don't mean to be uh, preachy, but I think on a night like tonight, where it's just so historic, it, it does warrant stepping back and noting that many people in this country uh, during the Trump administration saw the rule of law by Donald Trump, by the Attorney General Barr, and by a host of people in Congress and others be trampled on the corrupt use of pardons, the firing of uh, Jim Comey, the obstruction of cases in the Department of Justice for friends uh, of the uh, president, uh, the documented obstruction of justice by the then president uh, that was documented by Robert Mueller uh, in the team that I was a part of. Um, and all of that was... Um, so anathema to what many people viewed America stood for, which is the rule of law and something that we thought we were proud of and was a beacon for the rest of the world. Um, and so for today, uh, seeing Alvin Bragg, um, you know, in, and I, I think it's notable, um, an African-American DA um, have the tenacity um, putting up with these kinds of attacks and just keeping his head down um, is, I think, a sign that this country is on track, that people actually respect the rule of law and are willing to do their duty, um, even in the face of smear campaigns and worse, including death threats. Um, and it is, it's worth noting that we owe a debt to people in those public positions who really um, are sacrificing quite a lot that they didn't sign up for to uphold the rule of law in this country. It's a shame that we've gotten to this place um, when other, other countries are ones that we asked to emulate. And unfortunately, we're in a position where now uh, emulating other countries that have held 
um, senior political leaders to account. But I do think this is a, yeah. a important step in the right direction. Let me bring in uh, Reverend Al Sharpton, the host of Politics Nation and the president of the National Action Network. And uh, Rev, one of the things that Donald Trump has never experienced uh, is being uh, or an ordinary man. Um, he has gotten away with a lot over the course of his life um, from when he and his father um, were able to settle out of a discrimination case about not allowing black people to rent in his buildings. Um, it's not clear he's paid taxes more than a couple of years um, in his life. He's gotten away with a lot. And a lot of his friends have gone to prison for things that they did for him. Alan Weisselberg, uh, I'm thinking of, uh, Paul Manafort, Michael Cohen, who was his lawyer. Um, you know this man. He is being very, he, there's a lot of bravado coming out of his social media um, now and out of his son. But how do you think he really um, will react to the idea that he is going to be booked? He has been indicted. Well, I think, first of all, uh, a lot of us are forgetting Donald Trump just a couple of days ago said this case was over. They were not going to go forward. And uh, he predicted that. Uh, th this is not going to happen. Well, it's happening. Uh, so till the last minute, he was delusional that he was still above the law and that no one could get him after saying some very bigoted and anti-Semitic statements against Alvin Bragg, saying he was a Soros-funded animal. This is what he called this man, an animal. Uh, the irony of this is twofold. There may be cases that uh, legal experts uh, say uh, appear to them more serious if he, in fact, is indicted in Georgia and by the feds. But this is by far the most humiliating indictment because he's going to be booked and charged in New York. And he always would mm. say, he has said to me that I'm an out of borough guy. I'm an outcast like you are, Al, when we would be fighting on different issues. You're from Brooklyn. I'm from uh, Queens. They call me and my father names them big guys uh, downtown, the Park Avenue guys. And look at me now. I'm going to be president of the United States. Well, now those guys will look at this country and say, we told you he was nothing. We told you that he was a scam artist and that he shouldn't be president. For him to have to come to Manhattan on the same island that he felt he was looked down upon by the elite in New York and be booked and confirm what all of them said about him is more humiliating than he, if he's indicted on more serious charges in other places. So this is a humiliating night for him. A couple of days after he said this was not going to happen, he said this case was over. And he's going to have to go in the same building, Joy, that those five young men that were indicted and prosecuted for rape they didn't do, while Donald Trump took ads out calling for their execution, he called for them to be executed. And they were convicted. Some of them went to jail for years. One of them, Curry Weiss, who's at National Action Network every Saturday, did 13 years in jail. They will see Donald Trump, who bought ads against them, walk in the same building they were arraigned in and be arraigned sometime next week. And I think if that's not ironic, and in my uh, case, I agree uh, with Yusef Salam, comma, you will reap what you sow. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, and that uh, one word statement was quite a, a statement out of Yusuf Salam. Um, there also is a long history. Two quick ironies, uh, Rev. You know, Donald Trump long wanted to uh, be on the front of The New York Times, and he had a, a special obsession with The New York Times. And to your point about all sort of the karmic elements here, it was The New York Times that initially broke this story. So he made it onto the front of The New York Times. You know, he wanted to be an historic figure. He is now truly an historic figure, having been president, having been impeached twice, and now having been the first president to be indicted. Um, but there also is some irony, um, Rev, that, you know, Donald Trump always counted on sort of having the DA, the Manhattan DA specifically, in his pocket in a way, right, of being able to befriend the DA and have a special relationship with the DA. Alvin Bragg is um, an, 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 an anathema to that. He is not a DA. He's doing the opposite. He held a baseball bat or was pictured, I should say, holding a baseball bat seeming to loom over this DA. This is an African-American district attorney with whom he has no relationship and who he's attacking on social media. All of that is not helpful when he is being indicted by that very same man.
It is not only helpful, it's harmful. We had a, a big prayer meeting in Harlem for Alvin Bragg's family, who's getting all kinds of threats, and I'm sure they will increase. But let me uh, also say this to you about uh, what you just said. Let us not forget Alvin Bragg was the same prosecutor that, when he came into office last year, would not go forward with the prosecution. He felt that it was not enough. It wasn't winnable. So only someone that methodical, that serious, that took all of the flack for not indicting him when he first came in would be proceeding now. If I was Donald Trump, I'd be very nervous, because this is the kind of prosecutor that had already said, no, I don't see the case, that now sees the case, which means that he must have things that Donald Trump and the public never thought. Otherwise, the Alvin Bragg I know would not be proceeding. Donald Trump should not sleep comfortably tonight.